One of the most common superpowers within comics, or really any form of media for that matter that involves superheroes, is super speed. So much so that there is an entire subcategory of super person known as speedsters. And of those who fit within this specific genre of heroes and villains, there are a few who have additional abilities that don't come up super often that some more casual fans might not even be aware of. So in the spirit of making sure that we all know as much about our favorite heroes as possible, let's go ahead and explore a few. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into it. Let's start off with a bit of a softball here that a lot of the major comic book speedsters are capable of. Something that has come up on a surprising number of occasions is the need for speedsters to be able to phase through solid objects in order to escape a trap or cell or something like that. This is usually achieved by moving at such a high speed that the atoms that make up one's body are effectively able to move past all others. The basic idea is that everything vibrates at a certain frequency, and if you vibrate at a different frequency, you kind of become intangible, basically. We saw Wally West do this while he was operating as Kid Flash back in a bonus story during issue number 114 of The Flash, where Wally passed through the walls of a rundown building in order to try to locate a young boy who had run away from home, because apparently using a door wasn't an option for some reason. Barry Allen also used it once to phase through a plane that was in the middle of crashing so that he could board it and attempt to keep it together for just a little bit longer so that it could get to a much safer location. There are countless other examples that I could pull out to illustrate this point, but you get the idea. They can move through solid objects. Alternatively, they can also speed up their atoms in order to allow other objects to pass through them, such as bullets, missiles, etc. Though more often than not, someone like Barry Allen just chooses to instead catch them out of midair, mostly just as a way of showing off and intimidating his opponents. Which just kind of raises another question. Does super speed somehow make you able to handle red hot objects? Because when a bullet leaves the barrel of a gun, it is extremely hot. But I guess that really isn't that important of a question to have answered. On the Marvel front, Quicksilver hasn't really ever been shown as capable of being able to do this. But then again, he doesn't possess the same kind of control over his molecules that the DC speedsters often do. Makari from the Eternals also has never done this, but then again, they can psionically teleport themselves and others, so they don't really need to. So I guess this is much more of a DC thing, but they also have far more speedsters in general, so I guess it makes sense that they'd have a couple more abilities. Here's another power that is yet another example of one that is far more common within DC than anywhere else, but that's not to say that it is exclusive to them. Heroes and villains that have been granted super speed via the speed force within the DC universe are able to also use said force to grant speed to other objects or people. Which is sort of hard to explain how that works, but it just does. A great example of this was in the Flash Annual number two, where we saw Barry Allen speed up the circulation of blood within a man's veins in order to help speed up the spread of an antidote through his system to save his life. Not exactly the most straightforward use of this ability, but a good one nonetheless. One that is a bit more straightforward is the time that Barry Allen granted a little bit of his speed to Wally West so that the two could be locked in at the same speed in order to discuss their next move when dealing with an overwhelming foe. There are other speedsters who can do something similar to this, like Sonic the Hedgehog, for example. Yes, I am going to count Sonic as a speedster. And since there has been a long-running Sonic comic for quite a long time, I'm also going to count him as a comic hero. Expect to see him a couple more times on this list. Sonic has been shown to be able to impart acceleration onto inanimate objects, often sending them flying through targets at high speeds. He has also been shown that he can speed others up enough that they experience the same time-altering effects as he does. But you know what Sonic can't do? Steal speed from something or someone. For that, we've got to go back to DC once again. Normal form Barry Allen once admitted that he could steal the speed from someone, but he would have to get incredibly close in order to do so. And we got to see him do exactly that once he was infected with the negative speed force, cause comics. He used this ability on Reverse Flash, 
literally ripping the speed from his body and keeping him from being able to attack Iris. Note that this is different from negating someone's speed force, as that also effectively locks out Barry Allen's use of the speed force himself. It's like a weird cancellation thing. Oh yeah, that's also another ability that a DC speedster can do, somehow. They don't really explain it, it's all comic pseudoscience anyways, so just best not to think too hard about it. As I was saying, the speed force is a really weird thing when you step back for a second and think about it. It really is just a catch-all tool that writers use to try to justify some of the bizarre things that they have the speedsters do on the page. This ability that I'm going to be talking about in this entry is probably one of the weirder ones. That being the Flash's ability to concentrate the speed force into a physical, solid object. Something that can be interacted with even while standing still you know, when it shouldn't have any speed at all. This is basically doing exactly what a lantern ring can do with the emotional spectrum, creating solid constructs out of energy. In the case of Wally West, he has been shown in the comics using this ability to create his costume, reweaving the molecules within the Kid Flash suit into a new Flash suit. Doesn't seem like the most useful use of this ability, but whatever, I guess. On the Marvel side, Makari can do something relatively similar to this, though it has little to do with their super speed. Makari, in addition to being a speedster, is also a psionic. And with those abilities, they can create illusions and psionically manipulate a physical object's molecules in order to change its shape. As I said, it's a relatively similar ability, though it's not exactly the same. As in this case, it's a little bit more of like illusionary work than creating energy constructs. Still achieves relatively the same outcome though, so close enough? I feel like I haven't talked enough about Marvel's premier speedster yet in this video. So let's have an entry dedicated purely to Quicksilver. Now, I just got done talking about how Wally West and Makari can each create physical manifestations in their own ways. So why not take a look at something close to it that Pietro Maximoff is capable of? While he can't manipulate energy or use mental illusions to do anything like that, he did once possess chronokinesis something that other speedsters have been shown to be able to do as well. Basically, he could vibrate his molecules at just the right frequency to effectively travel through time, propelling himself forward hours or even days. While he possessed this ability, he was able to make small, micro leaps forward that created temporal duplicates, out of sync with each other by only a few moments. Because they were only separated by such a short amount of time, nearly imperceptible by regular humans, the duplicates were able to work together with a modicum of coordination. So effectively he was able to move so fast that it looked and acted like there were clones of it. Kind of like fighting a very, very fast version of Multiple Man. Which, now that I think about it, is probably the only way that you can make James Madrox more insufferable than he is already. Though that isn't actually a totally accurate statement, as at the time Quicksilver didn't actually have his super speed powers, and was instead powered by a substance known as Terragen that granted him his time-based powers. Maximoff did eventually lose his chronokinesis when all of the Terragen got worked out of his system, so this whole temporal duplication stuff isn't really anything that he can do anymore, but he could do it at one point so it still totally counts. Come on, you gotta cut me a little bit of slack here. As far as speedsters go, Quicksilver is about as bog standard as they get, so I had to stretch a little bit to even get him on this list at all. But it didn't feel right having a video about speedsters and not talking about Quicksilver, so here we are. Here's a fun little quick one that involves Sonic. Since we've been so laser focused on traditional superheroes, let's go with one exclusive to the blue blur. And it is super exclusive, since it concerns his quills. And I can't off the top of my head think of another speedster that also has quills outside of other Sonic characters. Have you ever been playing one of these Sonic games, or reading one of the comics, watching one of the cartoons, whatever, and found yourself wondering how this squishy bag of flesh wrapped up in blue fur is able to propel himself through solid metal robots and come out the other side without a scratch? Well, it's simple really. Kind of. Basically, Sonic is able to flex his quills. When he does that, he can manipulate the tensile strength of them, making them hard as steel. 
When he does so, he can curl up into a ball and slam into objects, completely decimating them. Alternatively, he can spike the quills up, and when he is spinning at high enough speeds, he basically turns into a giant blue buzzsaw. But I'm not really gonna get too deep into that part, as you all probably know at least a little bit about Sonic's spin attack. Provided, of course, that you know anything about Sonic at all. Which, I guess there's a chance that you don't know anything about him, but now you do. You're welcome. So yeah, he can make his quills really strong, which then allows him to hit things with enough extreme force that would basically liquefy any other organic being that tried to do the same thing. Guess I can understand why Dr. Robotnik would want to study him. That and the whole talking animal thing. That would certainly cause a bit of a stir in the scientific field, let alone one that can run at the speed of light and turn itself into a blue metal wrecking ball. He really is a remarkable creature, person, thing. And he can do all of that without having to resort to using guns. I'm looking at you, Shadow. You weird relic of the early 2000s, you. Everyone knows who Hermes is. He's the bureaucrat from Futurama. No, I mean the character from Greek mythology who serves as the messenger of the gods. As such, he is easily one of the fastest beings in the Marvel Universe. He's also known as the God of Boundaries, which is a weird thing to be a god of, but it is important for me to establish that, considering what I'm about to talk about. See, as an Olympian, as a god in general really, Hermes can accomplish a lot of things that even the most powerful speedsters cannot, such as his power simply known as tactile telepathy. As the God of Boundaries, Hermes can see into someone's mind by crossing the boundaries of their very being, which is kind of hard to explain in all honesty, so that's the best you're gonna get here. He used this on a member of the Guardians while Reborn Zeus was in the middle of a bit of a rampage in Volume 6, Issue 1 of Guardians of the Galaxy. In that same issue, we also got to see some of the limitations of his power, such as the fact that he needs to be able to make physical contact with the target in order to probe their mind, which is probably not much of a limitation, since, you know, he's so fast that not many people could really do much to stop him from getting within touching distance. And that is also probably where the tactile part of tactile telepathy comes in. He's got to get all touchy in order to get into your brain. That sounded a lot weirder than I meant it. In the end, though, it didn't really do anything to help him not get shot in the face by Marvel Boy. So, you know, there is that. Okay, so this is one that I'm adding in mostly due to the fact that I really want to talk about Power Rangers more, and I don't really get that many opportunities to do so. Therefore, this is a little bit of a stretch, but this is all for fun, so whatever. For those of you who stopped watching Power Rangers around the time that they dropped Mighty Morphin from the title, you're probably not aware of a trend that started appearing more and more in later seasons. That being members of the teams having powers that were usable while not morphed unsuited powers, as they're sometimes called. A prime example of this is the team from Dino Thunder, the 12th season of the show. This team featured members who had powers ranging from the ability to turn invisible, hardened skin, a scream attack similar to Black Canary, and in the case of the Red Ranger, Connor, super speed. So that means that the Red Dino Thunder Ranger is technically a speedster, if you really want to split hairs about it. Now beyond that, Connor possesses all of the same powers that you would come to expect from a Power Ranger, none of which were all that exciting or obscure. However, there is one little detail about Connor's power set that makes him unique not just amongst the Dino Thunder team, but amongst all Rangers in general. Throughout the series, the team winds up gaining several additional Zords in addition to their base ones, which means there are quite a few giant robots running around that need wrangling. While in his Triassic form, Connor gains direct control of five additional Zords, which makes up the Triceramax Megazord. This means that Connor possesses control over more Zords simultaneously than any other single Ranger that we've seen yet. And I really want to stress the simultaneously part of that statement. Technically, I think that Tommy Oliver actually had more Zords over his career as a Ranger, but it wasn't all at once. 
Instead, it was broken up with each of the different teams that he was a member of, which was quite a few, by the way. As I said, this entry is a little bit of a stretch to include on this list, but I feel it only right to try to include the Rangers where I can, as sometimes it's just fun to explore heroes that aren't part of Marvel or DC, or Sonic, but you get what I mean. So stick around on CBR and maybe you'll see me do it a few more times, pretty much whenever I get the chance. Hey there everybody, I'm John Algetz, I made this video and I want to know what you think. Which speedster's additional powers do you think are the most overpowered? Be sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below or go ahead and shoot me a response over on Twitter, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to CBR for more great videos just like this in the future.